Okay, I wanted to make a video of solving a system of equations without matrices um, where you may end up with a solution or you might not. So let's take a look at this system. We have 3x minus 5y minus 2z equals 6, 9x minus 15y minus 6z equals negative 15, and 2x minus 3y minus 5z equals 4. So here again, if you're solving without matrices, the first thing you want to do is to pick a variable that you wish to eliminate and have two equations with just two unknowns, the same two variables. So if, for example, you chose to be a little clever here and eliminate y, because I noticed that negative 5, negative 15, and 3 all are very easy to get a least common multiple, um, that might be the fastest way to do this problem. You could have also eliminated x or eliminated z, but those would have taken a little bit more work. So I would recommend here choosing to eliminate y. To do that, I would then look at equations, let's say 1 and 3, so if you look at equation one with me, currently you have negative five in front of y. And if you look at equation, I said one and three, I'm sorry, I meant equations one and two. If you look at equation two then, you have negative 15. So what would you need to multiply equation one by so that that negative five would cancel with this negative 15? Well, you'd wanna make it a positive 15. So in order to make negative five turn into positive 15, you would need to multiply that equation by negative 3. So if you took negative 3 times equation 1, that new equation would become negative 15. Sorry, what am I saying? Negative 9. I apologize. I was looking at the second part. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9x. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15y. And negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6z negative 3 times positive 6 is negative 18. So that would be the new equation 1 there. Now if I took that with the original equation 2, I'd have 9x minus, just copying here, minus 15y minus 6z equals negative 15, right? Okay, so if I take those two equations together and I add them, the goal would be to eliminate y, right? So if I'm trying to eliminate y, let's see what happens here. Collateral damage we weren't expecting when I add these together is that the negative 9x and the positive 9x also cancel out, so that's zero. We had intended for just the 15y and the negative 15y to cancel, which they do, so that's also zero. And we hadn't intended disease to cancel, but that's also unintended, but fine. So we end up with 0 equaling negative 33. Now, as soon as you get to a point at the beginning, like we just did because we were very lucky the way we set it up, if you get it to at the point here or later on in the problem where you get something that is always false, that means that this system cannot be solved. And if it can't be solved, this is an inconsistent system. Now, when you're dealing with matrices later on in the unit, Similarly, you'll end up with a row at the very bottom, typically, where zeros are on one side and a number is on the other, indicating zero equals a number, which is false. An inconsistent system has no solutions. So your solution set would be the empty set, which can be written with a set with nothing inside, or it could be written with a circle with a line through it. So either one of these would be your solution set because the system is inconsistent. Now again, if you had picked different equations to work with, like equations one and three, or equations two and three, you might have gotten further in the problem before you eventually get something false. But eventually, once you get to this point, you can declare that this is an inconsistent system because if it's false, it can't happen. Well, I hope that helped make sense of inconsistent systems, and I'll come back and do another video soon where you might have consistent dependent systems. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, happy practicing, and remember, math is not a spectator sport. I'll see you next time.